Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode. Today we are continuing our nuts and bolts video series. We're going to talk about the guest configuration for Azure Arc enabled servers. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode. Today I have Ardov with me, continuing the conversation on nuts and bolts uh, for Azure Arc enabled servers. Arnav, today we're going to talk about the guest configuration for Azure Arc enabled servers. But first of all, for those of you who don't know you, who you are and what is it that you do? Hi, I'm Arnav and I'm a PM working on Azure Arc enabled servers. Uh, excited to join today and chat a little bit more about guest configuration capabilities with uh, our service. Arnav, we've done a few episodes on Azure Arc enabled servers, talking about architecture, talking about onboarding capabilities. But the guest configuration is really where a lot of the magic happens. Um, we had another episode for uh, in the nuts and bolts video series when we talked about the architecture. Today, we want to talk about a bit about how that impacts the policy and also uh, some things around the pricing. So what is it that you can share with me and the, and the audience about this? Yeah. Great, great point. And so um, as we've kind of discussed before, there are other facets to the ARC uh, connected machine agent that's uh, utilized across Azure ARC enabled servers. And so we've chatted previously, and I know other conversations have focused on HIMDS, the hybrid instance metadata service, for example, which manages the identity and heartbeat connection to Azure and the extension manager. But another key facet of the connected machine agent, the third key component is guest configuration. Um, and the guest configuration component of the ARC connected machine agent provides in guest policy and guest configuration functionality, assessing whether you know a machine is compliant with specific policies that are going to be checking OS level uh, inside VM settings. And you know, Aaron, everything that you just uh, mentioned is really where the nuts and bolts are. This is really what makes things work. Uh, you can do Azure policy. You can do a lot of things with Azure Arc enabled servers without the guest configuration being active, available, available, um, and 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 working. Right. So all the magic can happen. So this is actually what we're seeing here on the you know in the diagram, which I really like. I think it it illustrates all the moving pieces of an Azure Arc enabled server single resource and how does that being used? That's right. And it's a great point. Guest configuration is really such a fundamental piece of the Azure governance fabric. It's often you know taken for granted um, how robust uh, the guest configuration capabilities in Azure management are. And this is extended and built into the connected machine agent such that it can be extended to your servers sitting outside of Azure. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to, to show guest configuration in action um, with some Arc Enable servers and compare that with the Azure VM guest config experience before chatting a little bit more about pricing. Okay, so let's see it in the portal and let's see how things are connected and, and where can people start working with this. Sounds great. So here in portal, um, we've already got an Arc Enable server set up, Tailwind Server 3. And so mm -hmm. this is actually a server that's sitting um, on-prem. We see some of the tagging another management uh, capability being utilized already. Um, we'll note something unique and that's in extensions. Um, we're using the extension manager that's part of the connected machine agent. We've mm -hmm. deployed MMA and dependency agent, but we don't have a guest configuration extension being deployed explicitly because that's implicit to the connected machine agent. So there's no mm -hmm. added step um, of guest config extension deployment. And mm -hmm. so this actually compares quite a bit to Tailwind Server 5. And here we have a a vanilla kind of Azure VM uh, in the same same resource group. And when we look in terms of its extensions, we've actually had to deploy, explicitly deploy um, the Azure policy for Windows, Microsoft uh, guest configuration uh, mm -hmm. extension in order to extend the guest config capabilities with Azure policy. So uh, there's a little bit of a compare and contrast where it's built in to the connected machine agent versus explicitly deployed as an extension for our Azure VMs. Mm -hmm. So why uh, why should customers think about this when they are designing or architecting an Azure Arc enabled servers uh, solution and an environment? How how does that fit in into that conversation? Yeah, that's a great point. And for this, you know, we can really illustrate guest config in action. And so it's almost like an added step to have to do the deployment mm -hmm. for the guest configuration um, extension. And so by removing that added step, uh, we help customers really pre-configure their Azure landing zone. So we mm -hmm. see is a lot of customers uh, group together Azure policies and Azure initiatives um, 
within their area, their resource group or the subscription, they're planning to land their um, server or Kubernetes projections into. And so mm -hmm. with the guest configuration agent um, already being part of the connected machine agent uh, for their Arc enabled servers, when you have guest config policies being applied to that landing zone, it's automatically going to be extending to those newly provisioned or newly added uh, Arc server resources. And you know, policies is such a fundamental piece to the Azure Arc enabled servers uh, story and Azure Arc in general, because as we were talking about uh, st ex extending or stretching a control plane, uh, the control plane that we keep talking about, that's ARM, right? But ARM brings capabilities with with it. It's just, it's not just for the sake of extending or saying that we're stretching. It's actually leveraging some of these services. Azure policy is a fundamental building block for doing all these governance pieces and how to use that with Azure Arc enabled servers. And I really like the fact that you brought the notion of uh, the landing zone because Azure policy, again, is such a critical piece in this story of Azure landing zone and, you know, the, the bigger story of cloud adoption framework and how does that fit into the picture. I also like the fact that you, um, like, I like the view of comparing Azure Arc enabled servers experience with Azure VMs, because one of the key things that we're trying to do on of right is, is to create that seamless experience, right? Make Azure Arc enabled servers feels like it's an Azure VM. Yeah, right on. And, and, and we kind of looked at it from that extension lens and compared that to the, uh, agent lens, but we can also see this in actually, uh, deploying a, a guest configuration policy as well. So here I've pulled up some policy definitions and um, I've focused in on just some of the guest configuration category policies. And so here we see a lot of built-in um, auditing policies, for example, um, system requirements being met, uh, security mm -hmm. baseline capabilities that are guest config related. Um, we can actually uh, narrow in and, and potentially uh, select a specific policy, for example, this one, uh, to configure time zone on Windows machines. It's a guest mm -hmm. config policy. And we can kind of go into the um, assignment of that policy into our Arc enable servers and our Azure VMs simultaneously. So for example, here we have this configure time zone on Windows machines. Um, we're going to be applying this to Arc enabled infra demo environment uh, that we're working on right now. And then um, in our parameters, um, we're going to be looking to uh, to include, explicitly include our, our connected servers, and mm -hmm. we're going to be selecting our time zone. Um, in this case, uh, let's go ahead and select uh, EST. Uh, actually, let's go with uh, Pacific Central Time. Sorry. There we go. We can uh, say that we're in Hawaii. That's okay. Yep. No worries. I guess we all want to be in Hawaii for uh, <laughs> some of us in our mindset. So here we picked a uh, Pacific time zone. We've included our ARC connected servers as well. Um, we can also assign to create a remediation task that's mm -hmm. also available with guest config. So it's not just audit, it's configuration as well. Yeah. Great. Next, uh, we can set a non-compliance message and we can go ahead and review and create. And what's really neat is this is going to be applying across our, both our ARC enabled servers and our Azure VMs that are in that same environment done kind of seamlessly. Yeah. So um, it really kind of typifies how this unified management plane through uh, guest configuration governance is comprehensive. And so and, you can go ahead. And, and you know, Arnav, just before you are, you know, before you're showing the audience kind of the next steps and how that experience looks like, uh, you know, when I started working with Azure Arc about, I don't know, three and something years ago, someone told me, and as I, as I was diving deeper into the world of Azure policies, someone told me that Azure policies is like group policy for the cloud. Um, and I really, you know, I never came from a Windows background. I wasn't sure like what, what is that all about? But as I was starting to dive deeper into this, I realized that the, this notion of creating a, a single policy platform to rule them all uh, was something that I couldn't comprehend back then. But today, obviously, uh, fast forwarding when I'm looking at Azure policy and specifically with the example that you just show, right? When you, what you said about a Windows server and an Azure Arc enabled server that has Windows installed as the operating system has the same experience uh, when it comes to the policy that really clicks. Like that's really what makes the difference here. Uh, so I really like that. Yeah, that's an awesome point. I think something we've noticed is um, often, you know, you have like policy silos for a customer, right? So you might have that on-prem uh, server state 
that has you know group policies being applied and you know they're organized by domain ou etc mm -hmm. and then you have your cloud estate and there you have azure policies being applied and that's being organized you know with subscription resource group tracking and so with arc you have something kind of unique going on where all of a sudden you're able to take that on-prem estate project into azure and now you're able to extend that azure policy uh, guest configuration estate as well and so uh, you're almost able to unify your policy state, just as you mentioned. So uh, it's a really neat use case uh, in terms of breaking down that silo uh, that's existed for a lot of our customers. So now that you applied the policy, can you just show me how does that look like um, on the Azure Arc enabled servers? Uh, so our viewers can know where mm -hmm. to go after they actually apply that policy. Where does that, where does that fit into? Right on. And so it might take some time for policy deployment to, to complete, but um, when it is complete, you'll be able to see the deployment in Tailwind Server 3 under um, policies that are being applied to it. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's going to take some time for it to show up. Uh, we do have a configure time zone one. Uh, I think this might have been a previously deployed one, but it'll come yeah. up here as well. Um, we're able to see a compliance date for that. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, if, for example, it's non-compliant, uh, you would be able to create a remediation task uh, to resolve as well. Yeah. Um, and and one That's thing cool. that is important to note, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I said this is like super cool. Yeah, and I think um one kind of important thing to note, um, and, and we see this kind of come up is is actually like the, the pricing uh piece of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um we are in this instance uh explicitly assigning uh, a guest configuration policy uh to an arc enabled server, and so mm -hmm. that's gonna trigger that six dollar per server per month. Uh, price point uh, for guest config policy for Arc enabled servers, uh, but it's typically free to use most Azure policies with Arc enabled servers. And, and we just want to add that clarification. Um, or if it's a Defender for Cloud deploying a guest config policy, that's free. If Azure automation is being used, it's free. Um, if the policy guest config is part of a security benchmark, that's free. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the policy category really has to explicitly be guest config. And on top of that, you know, if it's uh, Azure Stack HCI, um, then it's also going to be free. So mm -hmm. we just want to add a little bit of clarification and nuance because there's actually a lot of exceptions and the plurality of policies are free. It's it's just guest config policies that are explicitly assigned to Arc enabled servers that trigger that price point. Right, right. And I don't like that diagram because it simplifies, it kind of makes you know things a bit clearer because we are getting a lot of questions around this type of stuff right with the guest yeah. config with azure policy so i really like the fact that you uh that you brought this one so arnav i want to say thank you for coming again to uh the jumps to lightning show talk to me about uh guest config and azure policy and the pricing i think it's a very important topic for all of you that are working with azure Arc enabled servers um, and starting to think about how does that actually fit into my organization? What is it that I can actually do with that? Azure policy is one of the first things that you're gonna look at, uh, right? This is how you do uh, governance, compliance, remediation at scale. So that's what Arnov uh, just showed you. And obviously we're gonna, we're gonna include all the links to the documentation in the link below. Um, and for those of you who wants to continue seeing all these type of videos that we're doing, please make sure to subscribe to the channel as we are moving towards to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, we really appreciate the support. So make sure to like the, uh, uh, the video, subscribe to the channel so we can bring more people like Arnov to the show and have cool conversations around uh, hybrid and Azure Arc and everything that is in between. Arnov, I want to say thank you for coming again. Uh, be a guest on my show. And uh, we're going to see you all next time. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.